between whoops 20 and shit 30 miles an hour and we we basically lost control we ate far too much toast Windedly and welcome along to my garage. My name's Fred Hope. My username is Epo Durf, which is Fred Hope backwards. And today, tonight, I'm going to show you how to change the tyres on a Honda Cub 90. Uh, they're still 17 inch by 2.5, but I'm going from old smooth ones to some knobbly ones. In this case, Kenda 262s. Hey chums, I rushed ahead. I went round the other side. Uh, which is a 17 mil nut and I pulled out this little cotter pin I used little mole grips you could use pliers if you're extremely strong use your fingers especially if trying to assert dominance over a visitor or impress your wife or husband um, then I took out the speedometer cable which is just finger tight just undo the little collar weep, 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 and it comes out and the same for the brake as well. Disconnecting the brake is really easy. There's just this nut on the end, which I'll show you now, which has got a sort of cup shape to it. Can you see that? And that just means that every half turn it sort of locates on the barrel shaped thing on the um, brake arm lever. But anyway, just disconnect that, pull the cotter pin out, and I'm already with a quarter inch ratchet this side and a half inch the other side just gonna undo it so here we are nice and simple I've got my half inch ratchet here quarter inch ratchet here and it's just a case of undoing and then finger tight and you simply pull the spindle out holding the wheel and as smooth as a fish it flies out Hooray. Make sure you keep this little spacing collet thing to one side because it needs to go back in on the non-brake side when you put it back together. Right, I know comparison is vulgar, uh, especially when your partner asks, how do I look in this? And you say, yeah, nice, um, but not as nice as and then name someone two doors away. Don't do that. But we are comparing old tyre with new tyre. So let's have a look. So it's a V-Rubber V011. It was made on the fifth week of 2007. I'm not a brilliant rider, but several times the front end has washed out on me on gravelly bits and wet roads and stuff. It's actually quite hairy. So it's an old tyre. And in terms of actual grip, there's not very much. And it was advised at MOT that it was a bit shite. Let's have a look at this new guy. And it was made on the 43rd week of 2021. So it's much newer, hopefully much more grippy and hopefully a little bit safer. Let's just compare the tread patterns quickly. Yeah. Plenty of lovely grippy bits on there. Look at the yeah, depth of tread on that. So fingers crossed, this is not too bad on road and much more fun off road and enhances the quality of my biscuit reviews. Let's get the old tire off and the new one on. I keep these beautiful old tire levers that belong to Jerry Gatley and formerly Jerry Gatley's father. I keep them together with bits of old inner tube just used as rubber bands um, so that's a good tip you could use so all we're looking to do is get the bead of the tire over the lip of the rim and then we can just take it off with our hands okay, that's gone now so you just want to turn it round do a bit of jamming Take that out of there, and then just probably quicker and easier with your fingers now. I'll just try and keep it in frame. There you go, just pulling up now, ranting up. That's the one. Tire and tube off. I'm a bit warm, but I've got one side of the bead on, no soap, no nothing. 
just thumbs and shoving and grunting and patience. So now what you want to do is stuff the inner tube in. First things first, you want to get the valve and you want to get it through the hole and flick it through the hole if you can. And you just want to stuff the rest of the inner tube into the tyre. So as you can see there, I'm perspiring quite heavily. I had to fight that tyre quite hard. Now, I don't know how much of this is me feeling like I've made a difference and how much of it genuinely is, but the rubber compound of this feels far softer and far stickier when you drag your hand over it. So fingers crossed. I mean, even the sidewall is kind of, can you hear that? Tacky. So with any luck, these are a little bit better than what came off. Okay, you join me as the front wheel is very happily back on. Moved on to the back wheel and we've got a 17mm nut with a cotter pin, a 24mm nut, and we've got two 10mm bolts here for the back of the chain guides, one, two, and then we've got two 8mm bolts up here and I'm using the little Weira tool check plus again through there you can see a saggy chain here you can see the old magnetic parts tray which stops clumsiness or at least helps it be less clumsy I've disconnected the brake already so I'm just going to pull this spindle if I can Woof. oh dear oh dear look at this sprocket that is quite well worn. You can actually see on some of the, there we go, some of the teeth, the, the drive edge is the start to basically roll over and get smashed a bit, so I definitely need a new rear sprocket. The gift that keeps on taking. So, you can hopefully see my Cush drive rubbers are completely shot as well, so I'm hoping that they're nice and cheap. Again, it's the drive edge of each one that is smashed a bit. Outgoing tyre on the back wheel is a Heidenau, 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 anyway, 13th week of 2013. So again, nearly a 10 year old tyre. Time for a change. Again, loads of tread on the Kenda, nice soft compound. On this one, it's not been cornered very hard, but the top is very close to smooth, which might explain why I didn't have much grip. But the proof of the pudding will be in the eating. Just back to sticking the rear wheel in, and there's a bush inside the rear wheel, and of course, we need our good friend, the improdulator. Pokey on one end, scrapey on the other. What we're gonna do is poke our friendly improdulator up the hole to centralise the bush and let the, the what's it come through, he said, hopefully. Uh, I need some bread and I'm going to get some hobnobs as well. So this is the perfect opportunity to test the Kenda 262 tyres in some mud and also on a road. Let's go. Let's go to Headington. Let's go to Headington because that is where I last got stuck. Uh, and let's hopefully turn getting a loaf of bread and some biscuits into more of an adventure than it otherwise would have been. The Kenda 262s on the road, how are they? Uh, they don't feel the same shape. The profile doesn't feel the same shape uh, as the outgoing tyres. The outgoing tyres were um, sort of circular in cross-section almost, so you could flop them right over and the texture of what was beneath you felt exactly the same all the time. So whether it was straight ahead or flopped right over the corner, um, it felt the same. These, you can feel that there's a, perhaps a bit more squareness to them and also a change in texture as you lie it over onto the corner. It's a horribly misty day. And I think 
probably the roads are as disgusting as they'll get in terms of low grip so brand new tyres I'm not going to throw them around like a mad bastard but I will um, I'll try and give them some stick at least but they are brand spankers how do the tyres feel? Yeah, stop lollygagging about meditation how do the tyres feel? I don't trust the, oh shit yeah that was 35 miles an hour through a very greasy corner I just felt a little bit of like understeery, vaguey, pushy um, if you wanted to try this much faster I'd probably bite you feeling so this tarmac turns into gravelly track and then muddy track and then track down which a stream will flow uh, given the right conditions uh, and the conditions have been right recently so oh god hey 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 this is different this is really really different i just need to stop and do up the top box actually before my ship flies out oh yeah hear it roar this is different this is really different and actually quite nice I can feel there's sort of moving around this is really slimy mud but it's not um, and I'm not tensed up either I know just about enough about riding a motorbike off a, off a road that you want to be extra relaxed very relaxing so oh. I mean a pothole is still a bloody pothole but already Oh, don't kill the squirrel. It feels a lot nicer. You know, there's mud, there's rocks, there's slidey bits, there's... Yeah, this is cool. The Kenda 262. Stick it on your cub. And impress all your friends. Here we go. This is where I got stuck last time. I'm standing up. Oh yeah, slipped off the peg, doesn't matter. Just keep going. I've got most cross boots on. Everyone relax. Oh god. Ugh. Okay, yeah, I had to open the old visor there. I was steaming up despite the pin lock. Come on! Come on, you little bastard. Yeah, I mean, I'm ugh, sliming around all over the place, but it, it progresses on. First gear. Have it. Scream it's not off. Oh yeah. Come on! Ascend, you pig! Every time I go up steep hills on this poor little thing, I do wonder what a nice large engine would feel like. Chug, 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 chug. I'm going to select first gear for this and blast it. Watch. Oh, yeah! I mean, that is horrible, slimy mud! Horrible slimy mud and rotten leaves, and it's bogging down like an absolute arsehole. First gear again. Someone who knows more about these poor little things will be able to tell me why the cub is so unwell uphill. Is it because it's only got five horsepower and I weigh 105, well, 102 kilos I was the other day? But as soon as we're on the flat, you know, she's hopping on. So we're now up the top of Headington Steps, we're at the back of Ramway Hill. So let's intentionally go through some real shit. Oh yeah. It doesn't care. It just doesn't care. The air is absolutely saturated with moisture. Oh god. Gentle steering inputs. So I think those little sort of ridges of mud, those bands of mud in the middle of the road that sit between the two tyre tracks of cars or vans or whatever's been up here, I would definitely, definitely have fallen off with the old tyres. Not very fast, but fallen off nonetheless. Uh, and I didn't fall off this time. So these tyres are better than V-Rubber and Hedenau, Heidenau that were on there. So let's keep going. So this is third gear, a third gear drizzle very slime and mud. I'm going to go for second. It's just... Oh, you bloody tinker, you. 
So, I mean, it, it started letting go, but you can see even tractors are coming up here and having an interesting time. Yes. Good afternoon, Mavis. Who does this? The amount of effort it takes to come up here and fly tip it. There is a dump literally five minutes away. Oh yeah, that was a deep one. That was a big one. Boots work well. I've not got wet feet. I've got slightly wet trousers, but that's my own fault for wearing jeans. Another big one. Send. So we're, we're going over now. Sharp flint, slimy chalk, uh, loose gravel, between, whoops, 20 and shit, 30 miles an hour. Okay, that was a big one. Let's see if we lost anything there. We lost, uh, I don't know whether we lost anything. I suppose I better go and check. Wow, that's completely smashed my top box to bits. Whoops. Okay, well, that's the limit of uh, a Honda Cub off-road. Oh yeah, we lost a few bits. So, we lost the monopod. That's all right. See what I mean about clumsy in these boots. So, monopod, sorry, monopod. Came free with a load of other GoPro mount things, so. Oh god. That's gonna need fixing. Uh, where was the big one that I hit that I said, oh shit, that's a massive one? I mean, it's entirely possible that that's where the dictaphone I lost went and the mic smashing over stuff far too quick. Oh well. Lesson learned. Look how weak that stupid headlight is. Oh, it was this one. I stood up and pulled up. And then, uh, sadly, some of my kit was jettisoned. I'll have another quick check in the box just to make sure. And then I'll go more gently. After all, it is the same age as me. Okay, so the tyre is definitely up to the task of being uh, mistreated. I hit that pothole really hard, hard enough to sort of half rip a top box off. And the tyre didn't care. To be fair, the bike didn't care either, but in terms of performance of tyre, I am well impressed so far. I could I could not do what I was just doing with the old tyres on. So in that regard, it's an improvement. I suppose we could have a look and see what it does on grass, but I don't want to be that guy that encourages people to trash a grass verge when there's a perfectly good track there to use instead. I mean, on, what's this? This is really loose gravel. If you're relaxed with, whoa, gentle hands, whee, Oh, look at this, look, I can just bloody dart around puddles. I was saying if you're nice and relaxed with your hands, you can just sort of um, dart around everything and, and let the bike move under you a lot. I mean, look, I'm really ranting it there and it just sort of skates over it, but it keeps you going forwards and it doesn't wash out from underneath you like the outgoing tires would or might, or in fact do. And if anyone should ask me the reason why I'm wearing it, it's all for my true love, who's far, far away. Fuck this shit! And so on. Um, the sort of person that listens to Steel I Span is me. Uh, I also listen to Meatloaf. Those are the two. Uh, the two musicians I listen to exclusively. Uh, but I always think when I'm listening to Steel I Span, the sort of person that listens to them is also probably the sort of person that believes in trolls. Um, and it's, it's a category, or rather a description of person I can give certainly to Helen and some of my friends. And all I need to say is they look like they believe in trolls. 
and that fills in all the gaps and, and gives actually a very detailed description of what that sort of person is like. For anyone thinking, what the Jesus tap dancing Christ is he on about? This is the sort of thing you can do if you've got a Honda Cub. You just sort of rove around slowly, considering what sort of person listens to Steel Eye Span. Don't kill the man. Good. Excellent. No lives lost. This gets next. Fiat Panda there for Chris Sorder. Very succulent, very nice, very good. He wants his old yellow one back. I want him to have his old yellow one back. Mm, Christmas is coming. Oh yeah, you okay? No fuel. 189. Cost of biscuit crisis. <laughs> oh, look at that majestic piece of fine Japanese engineering, Aru. Right, we're gonna go for a top speed run. We're not gonna go off road on the way home. I've learnt my lesson there because the biscuits get smashed all to hell, as they say in France. Right, oh God. I forgot I'd broken that. Fix up job. Gently tap the lid into place. The key of endless possibilities. The glove of surprising warmth. I'm going to go for it. Come on! Just descend. Filthy little snake. Don't sit up, Fred, you'll slow it down. So at 50, they feel okay. They're a bit skittish. I might have too much pressure in the muscle, I don't know. They feel fine. I think the rolling resistance of these is higher. It's less willing to, I don't know, get up to 50. 45 seems to be its preferred speed now, as opposed to 50 with the smooth tyres. But for the added prowess of road, we can't be sad about, well, can we be sad about that? Not really. It does, I don't know whether it's moving around or whether it's just because there's actual tread on these, they follow the little imperfections of runnels in the tarmac, I don't know, but it does feel a bit more like it moves around underneath me, I think. But aside from that, I can't complain. I can't complain about these tyres. They were cheap. They were 32 or 34 pounds each uh, from inside the internet. And I rate them. I think they're good so far. Obviously, if I fall off, I'll have to make a video saying 100% of the blame for me falling off is attributable to Kender and their loathsome tyres. but. I don't think I will. So it's like 45 miles an hour here. I have, when it's been dry, which it is not, had the cub totally pinned right the way across the golf course and down the hill, even this corner, and it was really hairy. Um, because the suspension is so rudimentary, especially on the front and slack and loose and all the rest of it. So I'm going to go very steadily here. Plenty of brakes. You're not getting your knee down on this anyway. At least I'm not. And actually for a horrible cold day with slimy tarmac and mist everywhere, I've got to say, Kenda 262, there you go, look, 50 miles an hour, that's ample. Kenda 262, yes please. We hammered the piss out of our bread supplies because we went into a soup frenzy. The dog likes soup, I like soup, Helen likes soup. My mum is a soup fanatic. And we, we basically lost control. We ate far too much toast. And uh, yeah, 
I'm dealing with the consequences now, but in a happy way. I've turned what would be a dull chore into a micro-adventure. Does that make me an adventure motorcyclist? Definitely not. I just went to the next town over and bought a loaf of bread, but I made it about as fun as I could. So I'm going to sign off now. But are the Kenda 262s worth getting and fitting to your Honda Cub if you like riding it on the road and off the road? Hopefully you don't need this last little explanation because the video has explained it well enough. But yes, for on-road and off-road use, the Kenda 262 is adequate for up to 50 miles an hour even when the roads are wet and disgusting. My name's Fred Hope. My channel name's Epo Durf, which is Fred Hope Backwards. And I make videos on largely small motorbikes and biscuits at the moment, but variety is the spice of lice, so look out for other videos as well. Thanks for sticking around and uh, go and ride a bike, handle a dog, have some toast, eat some ham, whatever. Just enjoy as much of your life as you can because you'll be dead one day and none of it will have mattered. Cheers.